going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another edition of Math with Mr. Stevens. Uh, today we're going to continue where we left off in Lesson 20. So we are going to be on page 243. You're going to need your book. Um, we're going to start with question number three. Um, we are continuing to take a look at the equations of the lines that are given to us. So we're looking at the lines that we have, and then we are creating the equations from that. We're going to start by going into slope-intercept form and going from slope-intercept form into standard form. So we're going to be needing to go from one to the other to the other, and then back again. This is part of our eighth grade kind of repertoire, something that is required for us before we are going into Algebra 1 next year. So we need to know how, how to do this and understand how this works. So we are going to start with the line. As we did with the last video, and as we've done multiple times, creating our equation in slope-intercept form should always begin with y equals. All right, slope intercept form begins with y equals. That's always part of your equation. So just start there. And from there, we're going to start with the easiest part of our equation to figure out, which is the y intercept, where our line crosses through the y axis. In this particular equation, it's right here. Here is our x axis, here's our y axis, here's the origin. So we are down to 1, 2, 3, 4, and that is a negative 4. So we are down at negative 4 for our y-intercept. From here, we now need to figure out one of these other two points that meet at whole values and use those to find our slope. And that slope is going to represent how this line moves from point to point along its entire existence. So from here, let's go from, from a left to right. So let's go down 1 and then go to the right. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be an increase of 5 horizontally and a decrease of 1 vertically. This is how we put together our slope. We've said this many times. This is another example. This is another application of it. We are going to have negative 1 as a fraction over positive 5, which would give us a slope of negative 1 fifth. So we're going to plug this into our equation as a slope of negative 1 fifth x minus 4. This is our equation in standard, or not in standard form, sorry, in slope-intercept form. Okay, here's our slope, negative one-fifth. Here's our y-intercept, negative four. From here, we now need to take this equation from slope-intercept form into standard form. So in order to do that, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to reunite the x and the coefficient of x with y. In standard form, they need to be together on the same side of the equal sign. On slope-intercept form, they are separated. So here, they are separated, so we're going to reunite them. In order to do that, we have to get rid of negative one-fifth x. The way we would do that is by adding one-fifth x to both sides. So as we do that, this creates, makes that to become zero, so all that's left over here is negative four. That's fine. So now our equation looks like this. One-fifth x plus y equals negative 4. Okay, from that, we're good. Now, the next step, after we have put the x variable and the y variable together along with their coefficients on the same side of the equal sign, what we have to do is we have to make sure that, number one, our coefficient of a is positive, and in this particular case it is, it's positive 1 fifth, so we don't have to worry about that. But we also have to make sure that is an integer. That it is an integer, it has to be a whole value. So, in order to do that, in order to create that, we are going to take the whole equation, and we're going to multiply it by the denominator of the fraction that is represented in the coefficient of a of x. Okay. So here's our fraction that is our coefficient of x. Our denominator is five. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the whole equation, and we're going to multiply it little distributed property action and multiply the whole thing by positive 5. Okay, so then that gives us 5 times 1 fifth x, which would just be 1x, 5 times y, which is positive 5y, and then 5 times negative 4, which is negative 20. So this is our equation now in standard form. So this is our process. This is what we have to be able to do over and over and over again. Okay, These two forms, both slope-intercept form and standard form, 
are fairly easy to get into once you figure out what we have to do. Again, we're solving our equation. This is something we've done lots of times. We have solved lots of equations together. So this is just another example. In this particular case, we are not necessarily solving for one particular answer or one particular value of our variable or variables. What we're doing instead is we are making sure that our equation looks a certain way. We're manipulating our equation so that way it looks a certain way, so that way it matches the requirements of standard form. That's the same thing that we do when we go in the opposite direction to go into slope-intercept form. Technically, we are isolating y as our individual variable, but really we're just manipulating. We're just moving our equation and all of its terms around so that way it can look a certain way and tell us a certain piece of information. That's what slope-intercept form does. So now that we have turned this into standard form, let's move on to the next one. Question number four. Question number four is a little bit different. It's a little bit different. So when we create our equation, we again always start with y equals, and we start with where it crosses the y-axis. Now in this particular line, this crosses through the origin. The origin obviously has a, a, a ordered pair of 0, 0, which means the x value is 0 and the y value is 0. So technically, our slope intercept is plus 0. From there, we have lots of different potential lines that we can go from point to point on. Because this line cuts through each box and each one of those grid lines very, very cleanly. Okay, It does not go from one whole number to the next whole number and cross through one of these boxes in the middle. Okay, It goes from point to point to point to point where one grid line meets another grid line. It follows that clean all the way through each time. So when we're going from point to point, we're going up one, and we're going right one, up one, and then we're going right one. So we're going up and right, up and right, up and right, kind of like a set of stairs. Okay, see this? See how this works? So that means we're increasing our y value by one, we're increasing our x value by one, which means our slope is just positive one over positive one, which is just one. So our slope is 1x. So technically our equation can look like this, y equals 1x plus 0. We can simplify this though, and we're going to. We can start with y equals, technically, when we have a variable, we don't, if the coefficient of 1 is 1, we don't technically have to put that there. Also, when we're adding 0, or subtracting 0, technically we don't have to put that either. So we can simplify this equation to look like this y equals x. So that's what we're going to do. From here we're going to take this equation, y equals x, and now we're going to put it into standard form. We're going to follow the first step, which is to get rid of the x from this side and get it to the other side with y. Okay, We're going, in this particular case, because our slope is positive, we're going to subtract x from both sides. So subtract x here, subtract x here, and so that leaves us with negative x plus y equals zero. Nothing left over there. The problem with this is, this is not technically in standard form yet. The reason for that is A, A cannot be negative. In this particular case, it is negative. The coefficient of A, or rather the coefficient of X, which is the, which is represented by the letter A, A cannot be negative. So it can be zero, or it can be positive. In this particular case, it's not zero, so it can't be that. So that means it has to be positive. So as it is negative here, we're going to follow the same steps that we took in the last video. We're going to follow the same steps that we took earlier in here, where we are trying to get our value of a to be a positive whole number value. In this particular case, it's already a whole number. It's negative one, but it needs to be positive. So we're going to multiply the whole thing times negative 1. Distribute that negative 1 across all three terms. And so that gives us negative 1 times negative x, which is positive 1x. Negative 1 times, neg times y is negative y equals anything times 0 is 0. So this is our equation now. 
in standard form. From here to here, not a super big change. From here to here, that is kind of a significant change. Things, things are quite different. So just going from standard form to slope intercept form, things can change a lot, or they may not change a whole lot at all. It's all about what your line looks like and what the equation that you are using to represent it is. All right. These are just two of the, of the three forms that we're going to be looking at. Soon, next week, we're going to be taking a look at the third form and the potential scenarios in which that third form is useful. It's not very useful. Slope-intercept form is easily our most useful form. Standard form is somewhat useful. We're going to see it when we get into um, systems of equations. But point-slope form, which is what we're going to be showing and getting into a little bit next week, is not very useful, but we are going to look at some scenarios where it, it would be useful and it is useful for us to, number one, know what it is, and number two, know how to use it. So that's going to be our focus starting at the very beginning of next week and making sure that we are good to go with these. That's all I got for you, ladies and gentlemen. Adios.